Yo, 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 welcome to the new, the blah, blah, good job, me. <laughs> welcome to the annual New Super Mario Bros. series Winter Relay Race. I'm Yipley. And I'm J-Dude. And we'll be bringing you the juice today through the first leg of the five-game relay. So in this relay, the games are going to be played in the order that they were released in. So first, a runner will be playing New Super Mario Bros. DS on each team, and then they'll be playing new super mario bros wii and then new super mario bros 2 followed by new super mario bros u and new super luigi u yeah and the teams playing today are pardon my japanese team number one swimmy dingu with yeah <laughs> with this team has the players spicy noodles playing nsmb ds followed by volza on wii then Tanishi on NSMB2, then Mado on NSMBU, and lastly, N uh, Mystery Wolf on NSLU. And Team 2 is Team We Stand. With players Doomskull on DS, Junior Gaming on NSMBW, myself, Vaydude on NSMB2, Astix on NSMBU, and Uvideo on NSLU. And finally, we got team not Swimidingu, but team Swimding. With players Josh TGR, who organized this relay, uh, playing DS, Ramison playing Wii, Swimding himself playing NSMB2, Andrew Wayne playing NSMBU, and Gaspin Muffin playing NSLU. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's that's that. That's the relay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, first stint. We're obviously new Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo DS, not not the other new Super Mario Bros. games. The best, the best game, the best game. I would argue. Um, uh, it's, a, it's maybe the second best game, I think. Oh, well, in no, terms of speed running, no. Jay's Jay's biased. No, nope. I will say it's the best game in general, though. Let's go. That's pretty based. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're just chilling here. Um, I reckon the the players are just kind of warming up here. Um, should be ready to go in a few minutes. We'll, we'll give them the same the signal. Should get going. And yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can get this started for you probably in the next three minutes or so. So Jay, um, can you explain maybe what they'll be doing? What, or what they might even have already done um, before this race. Ah, so for New Super Mario Bros. DS, this game has a lot of RNG in it on the on the world map, especially, but also in some levels. So what these runners may have done, I know Noodles and Josh have definitely done it. They have done a, fo a form of super manip. In which, uh, first, they spent some time finding this seed, uh, this RNG seed in the game that loops over multiple seeds uh, using a program made by Super. And then uh, they, uh, they start their games at a specific time so that they can land on this cycle of seeds. And then they do a specific amount of double jumps in 1-1 that they will know what to do based on the toads. And but what this seed will do is it will make enemies travel um better on the world map to the left usually. And uh I'm pretty sure they are going to do mini manips. So they will uh be manipulating RNG up to five dash ghost house to get a mini mushroom and skip the elevator in that level. Yeah, this is that's that's the goal. This is this is all going to be incredible. Good job, <laughs> incredibly precise. And some of the movements they have to do. I mean, they'll be finishing levels in frames in in window frames of about window frames in windows of about ten frames for one two specifically, and in other levels like one one like Jay said and one tower, um, they're going to be breaking specific blocks, doing specific wall jumps, specific amounts of those things at specific times. To hopefully manipulate the RNG, like Jay said, to give that crucial 
um, mini mushroom in Ghost House and that shell in five two. So I think we can we can expect Noodles and Josh to go for that. Um, I don't think Doom does that. I'm pretty, pretty sure he doesn't. Um, but yeah, just expectation wise, I think you might you might start to see Noodles and Josh pull ahead a bit. They're they're currently the second and third best times in the leaderboard, and Doom Doom's a, uh, a little bit lower, but um, we love Doom. He's a, he's a really cool dude. And uh, like they're waiting for us to count down. Oh, we're counting down. All right. Ah, they're pinning. Me. All okay. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. Josh calling me a southerner. I've only been here like six months, but okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna count down, but in the meantime. Um, yeah, so Doom, Doom's goal, I think, is just going to be trying to pass the baton on to his teammates. They are slightly better at their respective games, I think. So hopefully they'll be able to get that W for Team We Stand a little later on while the Swim Ding, swim ding teams try to build an early lead. All right, real time, they have started. But, so should see them off in a half sec. There they go. Oh, they're nudes goes. Well, <laughs> now, Josh and Doomskull. So we're going to get that cleaned up a little bit. Here we just got the intro going on. But what's, what someone that will actually be paying attention to is the toads moving around in the background. Uh, those toads actually move around, as I said, depending on the RNG. So uh, if you can recognize their pattern, then you'll know what how many double jumps to take into 1-1 one, one to continue and get a blue shell in 1-2. Yeah. So 1-1 one, one here. Doom will probably be just doing normal 8 double jumps. Um, should get him what he needs. Josh and News will be doing theirs depending on what the toads are. And it's kind of interesting to see how different runners implement their different double jumps like you can do so many double jump patterns and it's all the same speed and accomplishes the same goal it's kind of cool oh do you want to explain what just happened to, or did you see but what, what happened to doom there uh i'm uh, sorry i didn't actually see it uh yeah so doom got what we call pixel stop and there's actually a slight chance that messed up his rng looking good for now but um he got, he got what we call a pixel stop, so he landed on the edge of a block and it completely stopped his momentum. Oh no! Ah. Uh, so, uh, Noodles and Josh getting a blue shell, that's what you want in 1-2. Uh, Doom getting a fire flower, which may be due to that pixel stop he got earlier. So he's actually gonna need to get a shell from next mushroom house. Ooh, tight bridge there for Doom. Just not having your expected power up can throw off so many things, but he's managed one too well, and it's gonna be losing probably. I think it's night. It's either 17 or 19 seconds by not getting that shell in one two. So a yeah. bit of a rough start for We Stam. Yeah, a bit tough for NSMB, but it's a lawn relay ahead. Runners are gonna go into one dash tower. First vertical level with a lot more kite movement and a, a cycle they're going to be going for here. Oh, oh no! Ah! That, that's that's really bad. That's even worse than Dooms. Man, that's a terrible, terrible. I did not expect that from nudes of all people. Nudes is so yeah. quality consistently wise. Mm -hmm. oh, Sometimes that's... it can just happen to anyone. Yeah, seriously. Ooh, Doom with a little backup shell action. Not going for it. That's rough though. And so, yeah, but team's that gives... is finishing one tower ahead. Yeah, significantly ahead of that. Probably, tw probably twenty-ish seconds or so, which is, I mean, yeah, in the terms of the long relay, like, definitely is not super significant. But in terms of at least this game, where we'll be able to see them compete on most equal footing. Yeah, Swim Ding's chilling. Josh, Josh is carrying right now. Doom trying to get in the gap. That movement draws Swimadingu with nudes equal again. 
Josh at a 3.30? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, let's just point out, all runners are using Luigi in this game. He doesn't actually save time, but he's funny. <laughs> yeah, what are those noises? Oh wait, we gotta switch the audios. There we go. Much better. So yeah, World 5 here. Um, 5 one. wait. If Josh is going for a mini, isn't he supposed to do a, um, a QSG in 5-1? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's supposed to do a UST. Maybe he's not going for mini. Or maybe he messed something up earlier. But uh, Josh went through 5-1. He did lots of unmorphs during the shell because while you're inside the shell, normally your shell speed is a little slower. Or you can also do what Noodles just did, where he's done a QSG off a block to maintain normal running speed in shell. Yeah, okay, so Glitch got me the deets on that one. Although Josh's 1-2 looked perfectly normal, as he misses the QSG there, too. Um, although Josh's 1-2 looked completely normal, he was a couple frames too slow to get the correct um, RNG value out of there. So even though it looked like he made zero mistakes, he actually messed up his manip. What? Oh, never mind. And um, so yeah, he won't be able to get the mini route going. Uh, okay. I think nudes can still go for mini, though. Oh, that's true. Oh, let's go! Whether All he's right. going for a mini or not, that's a great shell to have, just in case something goes wrong. Definitely. But yeah, it, that, that shell enables mini, because if he does get a mini mushroom from the hammer bro that hopefully now still shows up, I don't know if it'll show up, but no, it probably will. If, if we get a hammer bro to ghost house, um, and a mini comes out of it, Nudes will be able. Nudes will have to re-equip shell afterwards, just because it's very important for World Eight. Josh missing a QSG, slightly sketchy. Gonna have to watch out for fireworks. Want to explain what fireworks is real quick? Uh, yes. So when the last two digits on the timer match, I believe except for zeros, then fireworks will play, and they'll also spawn a item house at the beginning of the world. So that would lose a lot of time if you had that happen to you. Yeah, Josh did actually have to slow down there to make that work. All right, Ghost House. I'd argue. I'd argue Ghost House is like top top three most technical levels. Maybe top two. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah. super tricky. Yeah, Josh bouncing off a bruiser, hitting another bruiser with his shell, hitting these blocks so he can climb up the vine fast. Now he's gonna get through this bruisering go head into the elevator. And if he did have a mini for this elevator, he would be able to actually jump up the elevator because mini is like like low gravity, so he can jump up by wall jumping. Come on, nudes. Yes! Mini wrap Yo. nudes! Oh my god, oh that's such clean movement. Holy. Smooth like butter. Oh my <laughs> god, that is so nice, nudes. Jeez. That was insane. That's not even the craziest part. Watch this part. Just going up. You just going up the elevator. That's awesome. I'm so happy we got to see many. Yeah. Nudes clutching up with the swag. Doom having to wait for the elevator as you usually would. So you can see the time loss. I mean, I think they were about equal going into Ghost House, and Doom's just chilling while Nudes is already out. Mm -hmm. Now, Josh is going on to World 8, and he will be followed by Noodles and then Doom Skull. 757 exit for Josh. In races, a sub-8 exit is dang it's pretty dang good. So Josh is on good race pace here. Um, other dudes, we can see how far behind they are when they touch the castle. Meanwhile, though, 8-1, really scary, Jay. Yeah, in this level, they, they like to jump in a specific way so that the crows are where they... Uh, like, in the same spots each time so they can get through the level consistently. And Josh with a 271, that is the time you'd like to see there. 
Let's go, Josh. Um, coming up though, Fast Eight Two could throw a spanner in the works. This trick is just is it's something. Um, yes. Uh, they're gonna be wall kicking off the wall. Well, if they choose to go for it, they're gonna be walking wall kicking off the wall, going into their shell, and trying to do a frame perfect shell jump to get up space jump. Josh is going for it. Four tries is where you break even. He's gonna lose time. Uh oh. Uh oh. He he bailed. This might be the other's chance to catch up. Alright, New let's see it from News. News is really good at this trick. Oh. I can try. Third try! Third try. Let's go. So Nudes is actually going to be saving time for the space jump in this level. Yeah, I mean, and with Josh going for it a bunch and then not getting it at all, he probably lost... Uh, I don't know, at least 10 seconds, well, Nudes gained 2 seconds. So, a lot closer now, Nudes is. Next level the runners are going to be going into is Eight Tower 1. And this, this level is really cycle-based. Lots of cycles all over the level. Some are global, some are dependent on when you get there. So, but they're going to be wanting to be making all of them. Ooh. Oh, they also want to grab that fire flower to equip it later. Yep. Nudes with his fire flower chasing after Josh. Slight misstep from Josh, but that's not going to be a serious issue. Going for cycle skip here. Really precise jump just to slide under those thingies. Spikes? Thingies. Yeah, there's there's spikes. Little subtle subtle ground pound cancel there from Josh. Kind of makes the cycles a little bit nicer. <laughs> Going for an optimal door entry and just eaten by that dry bones. Let's see. Here they actually have a small window to hit Bowser Jr. each time before he goes into his shell, and they're going to be exploiting that for a quick kill. Yeah, News was a little bit sketchy there, but still made it through. And Doom, I noticed... Oh, okay, he didn't pick up a Fire Flower in the first bit, but he picked one up there. Alright, Josh is only four seconds ahead of Noodles now, even though he had that massive, massive gain at the start. 8-2 really cost everything for him. Um, and the reason why they did actually keep Shell through until this level is, well, you'll see why. They're just zooming horizontally. If you don't have Shell here, you, you swim really slow and awkwardly, but with Shell, they can just skeet around these eels and skeet right crucially at the final part of this stage really really fast yeah and then this whole part right here is just swimming to the right so it adds up um i forget exactly how much maybe something like 10 seconds lost if you don't have shell yeah something like that um i think 8-3 though marks a pretty calm point in the run we're gonna have one or two more relatively chill levels. Probably one more. I don't think Eight Castle is easy, but um, after that, the heat's really going to be applied, right, Jay? We're going to have to deal with what we call gauntlet. Um, I'm going to explain kind of a few of the difficulties we might see up ahead. Right. So, gauntlet le contains levels 8-5 to 8-8 and 8-tower 2. 8-5 is generally a, ru a run-right level, but... Bad things can still sometimes happen there. But 8-6, one of the most... Oh, should also point out they're taking intentional damage here because they're going to be grabbing a fire flower coming up. Yeah. This level is really chill. We're just going to see some nice spiders. And they're going to actually crouch to avoid pixel stops on these vertical moving platforms. You remember the pixel stop that yeah, Doom Skull had? Um, crouching actually cancels those, or shooting fireballs, as News is going to do after he picked up his fire a little bit earlier than most people usually do. Um, equally as fast, though. Next, they're going to be heading into um, uh, Eight Castle, which is 
for the most part, kind of a run right level, but it's still very tricky. It's especially in the middle when you have to crouch through a gap, which I, I believe they'll be going for. Yeah, we've seen lots of races die to that little, little crouch gap. Um, deceptively hard, it looks like if you just slide through as Josh is going for it here. Watch out. Uh oh! Ooh. Big save! Massive from Josh, but News gets it, does not lose those two, three seconds that Josh did, and now he's right on his tail going into the Dry Bowser fight. Right. So here. They're actually going into the final boss of the game, Dry Bowser. So let, let's see if they can get the Dry Bowser jump. Really tricky here. Oh my gosh. Ooh. He did it. Wow. Insane. So yeah, that's going to be the new Super Mario Bros. DS section. Um, timers are still running, just I guess Steve Wait. forgot this. Both of them forgot this, but... Wait, wait, Bowser Jr. still has Peach. What? What? Yo, what's that? What? That looks like a bridge. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, he's still running with her. Ain't no way. Dude, I thought Ain't... the game ended there. Bro, we got juked. They just added- I think this is DLC. I think they just added- <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is Gauntlet coming up. This is 8-5. And yeah, this level is run right, but some bad things can still sometimes happen in this level. Nude's actually getting hit here. Ooh. That's rough. <laughs> Josh's movement there really scares me. I don't know how he just... <laughs> Fun fact about 85. Um, yeah, Josh's movement's really whack in this level, but it works. Alright, now Which Gauntlet is... really starts. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, one of the most tactical and precise levels of the run here, 86. Not only vertical, but I guess horizontal at the same time because you can move around the screen. Great start from, so far from Josh. Really tight Koopa bounce there. Sweeping his way through the spikes. A little bit of sketch on the stairs, yeah. but... Okay, no skip! Yeah. And even going for a volcano skip would save even more time. Oh my. Josh getting oh. a free 70. Noodles actually getting a high free 71. Great save from Doom, by the way. Just a little, little side note. He's he's doing good. He's he's keeping he's keeping himself in play for the later games. Yeah. But yeah, wow. Volcano skip in race from both of them. That's really crazy. So much harder than it looks. It. Yeah. Some some very technical hidden mechanics there that uh yeah. extremely hard to pull off in a race. Very very impressive for both of them. Here in 8-7, what you may have seen the runners do there was a fire hop over the ledges. So you shoot a fireball and then you jump. And then they're also grabbing the star and finishing off the level. Are we? Oh, doing with a little spaghetti. Nice way out of it. Do you think we're on 22 pace, Jay? Uh, we, we might be. I, I haven't been checking the pace, but... Run's been pretty decent. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm I have no idea. They've made some decent mistakes that are notable, but on the whole, this run's been very clean. Um, for context, as they get star there, this this level's actually all RNG, by the way. They could just get randomly hit by a, a meteor, but um, they don't. Um, yeah, for context, the record is twenty two fourteen. Don't yell at me. I'm, I think I'm wrong. 2214 by glitch? Yeah. It's actually 0.23. I, I just have my splits open. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, the runners are going to be going to 8 Tower 2 here. And I believe they're going to be going for a Skippy Warp here. So, going to be triple jumping, grabbing the Fire Flower, ground pounding, and continuing to jump up there. 
Oh yes, Josh. Oh yes, nudes. That's that's a very awkward trick. It it looks like okay, you know, you just go up, but um, before we stop being dumb and realized you could ground pound cancel, that trick was um, it was a tenth of a tenth of a pixel away from working. So just adding a ground pound cancel, which adds barely any height, um, means that that trick is really really tight, much tighter than it it looks like. Get that wall kick off. But yeah, we're just chilling in an auto scroller right now. Doom's having a little bit of problem in 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, see if he can get this star clean. Okay, he, he should get that pretty easy, yeah. Still a fine run from Doom, keeping team we stand in the race. Yeah. He he told he or he was <laughs> he was making it very clear that he had not done a whole lot of practice before, um, did not feel very prepared for the race. So I'm sure if he is able to finish it up clean from this point onwards, I think he can be pretty happy with himself. He's done a good job. Hmm. Um, we see he can go for the normal death warp here, um, not opting for skippy warp. Pretty tricky stuff. So he'll just be trying to get to the checkpoint and killing himself um, the old way. I was about to say intended way. They do not intend for you to kill yourself. Um, or rather, uh, I don't know yeah. how to say that without it sounding bad. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but he's just going to... Oh, Ooh. no. Oh, he's fine. He's fine. Let's go, Doom. <laughs> Grabbing the checkpoint and then re-entering the level. Josh and... Nudo's cleaning up Gauntlet here by beating up Bowser Jr. again. And then they'll be heading to 8 Tower 2. Yeah, we're definitely and... on 22 pace. Yeah, yeah, it's 22 pace. We're on we're on beat my PB pace right now. <laughs> Even with all those mistakes. Oh. Feels bad, man. But yeah, this this is also a really hard technical level. Um, well, actually, maybe not technical, but definitely hard. Um, a lot of things that could go wrong, a lot of hitting could happen. Yeah. Gonna be hitting the switch here, flipping the screen in the game, and here they're gonna be scrolling the screen right so that these burners can go away in time for them. Not, And that was also intentional damage there on Josh and Noodle's part. More intentional damage boosts. <laughs> I appear to be stupid. Apparently, it, it cannot beat my PB pace. It's about 10 seconds slower than that, so let's go. My PB is safe. A little, little delay. Josh and Noodles making it through uh, yeah, little scary swamp rooms. A little spaghetti for Josh. Ooh, a lot of spaghetti for just nudes. Maybe taking the lead. Oh man, they're neck and neck. Ooh. Holy Yo, sink. Sink. <laughs> this sinkers? always happens. This always happens. So, like whenever we do races, be it like a tournament or like a relay or something, there's always two dudes that just this happens every single time. <laughs> They'll be, they'll be yeah. like kind of apart, maybe decently close to most of the race, and then all of a sudden at the end, boom, sink. And now it's coming down to Death Stare, of all things, and Nico Manip. Fake, by the way. So yeah, what Death Star is, is there's a bit of RNG here, but they both don't get the, the lawn stare from Bowser Jr. So they are still synced into the Switch hit. Josh is slightly ahead. Oh yeah. 22.53 and 22.54. Crazy times. Wow. Two 22s. One second apart. So, GG's call. So Team Swimding and Team Swimding are both roughly tied into New Super Mario Bros. Wii. But Wii Stan is not out of it. Oh no. Oh, we forgot to ping the Wii Runners. <laughs> Oops. Looks like they know what they're doing. Oh no, Doom! Oh no. That's not good for me. Do we have the, uh... Yo, we got the Wii commentators in here. What's up, y'all? Hello. Yo, what's up? 
Oh. All right. I guess we should hand it off to you guys. DS Runners did great. Doom is still kind of chilling, but yeah, wheeze up. All right. Should we introduce ourselves? Hello, I am NM. I am U Video, kind of a more veteran runner of Mario E, but excited to be here nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I've only been playing this game for a little while, but you know. <laughs> All right, so All it looks right. like we're watching the opening cutscene right now, but they're about to get started. This is super good between these two teams so far, and I have no doubt that my team can still catch up. <laughs> They're not that far behind. So, let's see, do we have control over the audio? I just want to make sure. Well, we'll figure that out in a minute. Anyway, these guys are in 1-1. One, one. They're going to be grabbing the propeller mushroom, and the propeller is going to be the most important power-up of this whole run. It's going to be really important. They keep it for a couple specific levels in World 5. Uh, mainly... Vertical levels and some auto scroller skips and stuff yep. like that. Yeah, five tower and five four are the main levels we're looking to have propeller for. So there is going to be one backup opportunity if they end up losing it, and if they lose it after that point, it's not a big deal. So that's kind of what we're looking at for Mario Weave. So they got the propellers now, and they're going into one dash two, kind of your typical underground level. And in one dash two. They're going to be they're going to be using motion controls to tilt these platforms. And what that's going to do is they can turn them into slopes, like downward slopes, and you can slide down those slopes, and that actually is going to save them a little bit of time. That's kind of a cool thing about 1-2. Clean slopes. Ooh, Volza doing the wall kick star grab. Alright. Good old Azor kicks. Oh. Ramison just missing out on a 461 pipe. Hey, still pretty solid stuff. Mm hmm. Both runners getting a 456, which is the best you can get. Alright, and it looks like Doom School's finishing up. Let's go. GG's to him. Alright, at the start of this level 1-3, there is a random hammer bro. So what they're going to be doing is a triple jump. That If you do a triple jump, it actually gets enough height to get over him every time, even if he jumps up and tries to snipe you. So that's pretty cool. And then at the end of this level, they're going to be taking their first secret exit. And I think you're supposed to use a Yoshi to get up there, but since they have the propeller, they could just fly right up there, and it's pretty pretty fast. Not much to this level except for that. Yep. But after this, the runners will be moving on to World 5. Yeah, this run Looks is going to be a like lot. Both runners did not get the fast jump to the <laughs> exit. This run is going to be a lot like New Super Mario Bros. DS in that they're going to be taking some warps to skip through the game really fast. And just like DS, this game also goes through only worlds 1, 5, and 8. And so it also we're... just has like power up use <laughs> most of the run too, so... Mm -hmm. So we're about to head on to world 5. Just like that. This cutscene right here with the Toad is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it comes up with a couple of text boxes. And the game doesn't really prompt you to, like, press 2 or A to advance these text boxes initially, but you can actually advance them faster with 2 and A. So that's pretty interesting. And then right here, when they enter this cannon level, uh, the cannon load is actually really fast. In fact, it's so fast that the game tries to artificially make you think that it's longer by adding some extra time to it. Um, but if you just spam 2 then the load will actually finish earlier, like as soon as the level is actually loaded. So you can do that to save time on some of the like cannon levels and the, the enemies on the world map, which we're going to see in just a minute here. So you can save a little bit of time like that. I just want to point out, um, speaking of load times, the load times are like a little bit messed up for this game. So when uh, you get like a really good time on the leaderboard, they do get removed from your time. 
Um, but because this is a relay, we're only looking at the real time of these runs. And if you compare the real time of all these runners and their PBs, I think they're all within two seconds of each other. So this is going to be very close, I think. I think there's only like, there is like a little bit of time variance, but over the course of the relay, I'm pretty sure it's been a little bit like made so that each team had people with like faster or slower loads that would cancel out to an extent in different games that had that. And Bramison yeah. losing propeller in 5-1. Ooh, that's okay. He's got the next level to get one. Yeah, there is a backup in 5-3. And, oh, it looks like he's going to be doing a yeah. ice so if you look at, for this, I yeah. think. Not if you look at Volza's there. screen, he's going to be skipping over that little platform in the water that you would normally use by just using propeller. Oh, he lost prop too. That's okay. Um, like, Brammy so has to do the small Mario <laughs> backup now. Yeah, Brammy tried to use the Ice Flower to freeze the Piranha Plant and get to the next section, uh, but he got hit, so what he did instead was he actually intentionally powered down to Small Mario, because for whatever reason, Small Mario jumps slightly higher, and it's just enough height to get out of that water there. Uh, Big Mario would not, not actually be able to do that, which is really interesting. All right, so now... Like I said, we have an overworld enemy fight here with the Piranha, and you can spam through that load to make it a little bit quicker. This level's nice and easy, you just gotta grab those balloons and make it down to the treasure chest. Essentially every, like, level or anything that is, like, a small level, like, not much in it, like, uh, Mushroom's house, 1-Up House, Star House, I think, and overworld enemies and cannons, you can just skip over the loads a lot by mashing and junior did get the fast jump at the end of one three so. and you'll be mm -hmm. seeing grammy and volza both doing a propeller backup in the roulette block yep so it's nice that that backup exists that was very clean from volza And a risky. Oof, jump yeah, that there. scared me a little with Brammy. But... All right. Brammy just taking it safe and spinning over. Yeah, so they could have opted to do the other level, 5 2, uh, instead of 5 3. It's only about five seconds slower, and most people would consider it to be a lot easier and safer for a race like this one. But because they both lost their propeller suit, uh, they had no choice but to go to 5-3 to get it back. But we're on track now. And we're coming up on 5 Tower, which is the first of those levels that I mentioned earlier, where it's going to be really important that they have their prop suit. Because this is a vertical level. So I'm very... level to... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You, you go ahead. Talk. All right, I was just going to say, I'm curious to say if they go for the hardest cycle here. Oh yeah, so on that note, well, this level has a lot of different cycles. And because of the spiked walls, and they are not very short cycles, so if you like miss a whole cycle, it could lose up to like 10 seconds. But hopefully our runners will all get either the 556 five, cycle or the 546 cycle based on the in-game timer. Bulls up yep. might be able to edge it out here. <laughs> that was nice. He so there we he go. actually got a 557 five, at that door, just meaning he got that really fast. That cycle was originally named 556 five, because that's the time you would get when you entered the door, but people have gotten so much faster. You can get as good as like a 558 five, at this point. I mean. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, with like other cycles, like Instant Lands, which is like a strat where you can spin drill at the very edge of a platform and you can like immediately down drill and basically just like get an instant jump. You can, there's been, I think, two people that have got a 560 door. Dang, which, that's really fast. Yeah, but so far, <clears throat> both the runners have got the five five six cycle yeah it was very nice five towers we'll see if junior gets in a minute um and nice iggy fights as well iggy's pretty simple he pops up at the same point every time but 
if you mess up just a little bit, those platforms can uh, be in very different places and it can cause things to go a little weirdly. So they handle that well. So now we're at 5-4 and 5-4 is supposed to be a giant auto scroller. It's you're on this raft and if the raft has too many enemies or coins on it, it just stops moving. So the idea is to kill the enemies or collect the coins to get it to keep moving forward. But we don't have to do any of that at all because we have the propeller suit. So let's see how these guys handle it. This is a pretty major part of the run and it saves... I actually don't know how much it saves, but I know it's like over a minute. It's I about think. a minute and 20 seconds. It's enough that yeah. they could save the game and if they failed it once and tried again, they would probably still save time with it. Yeah, so it is a strat used in most top like sub 30 minute runs. Or yeah, yep. I would say. So you just saw and Volza go up to the top of the screen and now um, Brammy is going to do that. So up there, there's actually a very conveniently placed conveyor belt that just happens to be up there, which kind of lets us get through this ending section. There is technically another way you can do that. I don't even know if it's really worth mentioning because I know nobody's going to go for it. Oh yeah, there is a way to like do some <laughs> frame perfect shenanigans and jump on some bombs, but <laughs> I don't think anyone would go for that unless it was like a joke. Yeah, so that, that was really good from the two runners who just did 5-4, and we'll see if uh, Junior gets 5-5-6 uh, five, five, here, I'm curious. Our and other five runners ghost. are going to be going into 5-Ghost House, yeah. And they will be taking the secret exit to go to World 8, so... Funny thing about NSMBDS and NSMBW, they're like... Load, like, the NSMBW load list times and the NSMB, like, normal times for the leaderboards, like... They're very, very similar. Like, the records are only like seven seconds apart. Yep. It's kind of like that with uh, Luigi U and New Super Mario Bros. 2 as well. The games are almost the exact same speed. All right. Man, All runners speed. got the cycle. That's awesome. Volza getting meme <laughs> jump. Yeah, that Volza is just crazy. Jumped right through that boo ring. Let's see if uh, if Bramison goes for that. I would not expect someone to go for that in a race, but <laughs> here we are. Okay, Bramison so Bramie, just doing the normal boo ring jump setup. Yeah, Bramison took the safer approach there, where you intentionally bonk against the stairs to uh, set yourself up to just jump right through the boo ring. But you can actually do that without slowing down at all, and that's what we call meme jump, and it's. Saves a little bit of time and it's just really cool looking. It's still cool looking when you do it the way Brammy does it. Just a little bit faster to do the, the no slowdown method. Alright, and now we're heading to World 8. This is going quick. <clears throat> but World 8's like half the run, so... <laughs> yeah, seems like World 8 is a very big part of the run in most of these NSMB games. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so 8-1. Uh, I believe it's like our first instance of significant RNG. Not anything crazy, but these meteors falling can have some different patterns. So they should be taking a path that's ideally going to have them not get hit no matter what happens. However, if they do end up getting hit, it's really not that big of a deal because this level, they're going to end up damage boosting at the end anyway. So they just need to make it through. The propeller is not quite as important anymore at this point in the run, but they just need to get kind of clean to get through these next few levels. Yeah, losing propeller anywhere past 5-4 is really not a big deal as there is a run on the leaderboards that is only a few seconds off record that gets hit in Ghost House and doesn't even have propeller for this level. So it's really yeah, not a huge I didn't deal. Know that. Yeah, Who's I'm pretty that? sure That's Skippy's 22-11. Dang, that's really cool. And it also gets swipes in Castle, which we'll probably get to when we get there. So. Oh yeah, we, we can mention that for sure. Oh, Junior. Uh, well. That's okay. This, see, this is why you save. <laughs> uh, well, at least he saved, so it is fine. Yeah, it's very convenient that this level, 5-4, uh, comes right after a save point. Oh! <laughs> Alright, so now they're heading into 
And they're small Mario, so you might think they're going to power up again, but they're actually not. It really, for whatever reason, helps to be small Mario for this level. Um, part of it is that when you shake the Wii Remote with small Mario, you get these little twirls that extend your jump. Uh, with Propeller, you don't have the option to do those because if you shake the Wii Remote with Propeller, you just fly up in the air. So that actually helps a lot with the platforming for this level and kind of skipping over some of those hills that are rolling to the left that would slow you down otherwise. Also saves a decent bit with pipe animations and runners will be trying to crouch jump on backwards moving slopes to reset their momentum in mid-air as we do not like backwards momentum. Yep, you're gonna see that here. They crouch jump on these uh, these hills and it'll actually let them uh, regain their speed faster. It's a pretty cool little technique. All right, Junior rated their 5-4, let's go. And I think we've just seen in these relays, Mario Wii and Mario U tend to be the, the games that where a lot can like go really wrong. So it's definitely not over yet. Uh, so even though like we, Team Wii Stand is a little bit like behind right now, there there's plenty of relay to go. And I'm totally rooting for that to happen, for Team Wii Stand to come back, because that's my team. <laughs> so we're in the, the auto-scroller now, this is 8-7. Uh, and there's not too much to be said for this level. They're just gonna recollect their power up here. And try to jump off of these coasters as soon as they possibly can to save the most amount of time. There are some small strats, like after jumping off the first coaster, you can do a triple jump against the wall, and to not have to do wall kicks, which Volza gets, we'll yeah, see if nice. Brammy goes for it, which <clears throat> only saves a little bit of time. I just uh, want to mention, like, they're like yeah. exactly synced at this point, these teams. I believe. Oh, wait, maybe not. I think oh, never mind. Like 30 seconds apart or something. Ah, no, like 15. <laughs> I, I think it looked like they were seeing for a moment because of the, uh, the auto scroller, I guess, just has two parts that look really similar, so I, I was confused. They're synced in my heart. Bulls are getting the 8 7 pipe kick, which. <laughs> rare occurrence. Everyone seems to miss that pipe kick. Yeah, so Junior's heading into World 8, this is good. Junior's gonna be coming up on an 8-1 RNG. But at this point, he's made it through the the roughest stuff. At least in my opinion. World so these 5 guys are is almost... definitely one of the hardest <laughs> parts of the run. Yep, these guys are almost finished with the auto-scroller, and they're gonna be taking uh, a shortcut all the way to basically the end of World 8 to 8 Airship. And there's only two levels left after this, so... In 8 Airship, uh, the level is very designed around... You have to spin these screws to lower platforms. And you're supposed to use those platforms to kind of make your way through the level. And I don't think they're going to actually be using any of them. I think two of them, right? I think they use two of the screws. Um, but that, that's it. Yes, I believe that is right. Yeah, because just very conveniently at the start of this level, there is a, another propeller, so they're going to be re-grabbing that propeller suit, and they're going to be using that to do a lot of like smaller skips in this level. It's, it's one of the cooler levels, in my opinion. One thing to mention, at the very end of this level, there is the like hardest trick of the run in the <laughs> Bowser Jr. fight, where you can have some brain-perfect ground pounds to save about... 23 seconds, I believe, up to. Yep. And, ooh, looks like Volza will just grab that back up there, but that yep. is a big turning point for runs and causes tons of resets. Runners lose tens and tens of runs on pace there. But, yep. yeah, that is something to see which, <clears throat> how much bombless each runner will get. Yep, yeah, the trick you're talking about, it's called bombless. Um, it's called bombless because you would normally fight 
Bowser Jr. at the end of this level by hitting him with his own bombs. Um, but you can actually skip those, and the, the most optimal way to do it is by skipping two of the bombs and then utilizing one of the bombs that he throws out. And so we refer to that as double bombless, right? And we're going to see if anyone gets double bombless. Even getting single bombless would be really, really hype. Um, but definitely not required for a good time at all. It's just uh, definitely a big run killer for world record paces. Volza now going into the Bowser Jr. fight. We will see what he gets. Yep. Oh, and the way this is going to work is they're going to try to do a ground pound to squeeze in between the ceiling and Bowser Jr.'s head because ground pounding makes you slightly smaller and just barely fit in that little gap. So let's see if they can pull it off. Oh, oh. Volza was one frame off where Mario got in, but he missed the time to be able to actually get the ground pound. Let's see if he gets any random hits. Oh, oh no. both runners troll hitting. We got a few more opportunities though. I'm keeping my eyes on both of these screens. <laughs> Same. Oh, another troll hit for Volza. Alright, it doesn't look like either of them are going to be getting bombless, but um, we still got Junior. Yep. Let's see what happens. Alright, either way, they're making their way into the final level. This is pretty good, pretty close between the two swimming teams. FYI, uh, the, those characters, they just translate to swimming <laughs> for the team Volza's on. <laughs> I'm not sure if everyone was aware of that, but yeah. So there are two teams named Tw Team Swimming. So like the runners will be heading into the last level here and in this level there is not very many difficult tricks that are a big part but there is still a lot of very like smaller things that could definitely lose a lot of time at the very end of the run yep but if any of the runners do get hit, there is one more propeller back up right at the very, very end of this level, which is where the propeller is used most in this level. Yeah, that was a very nice first room. Alright. The second room is just an auto-scroller, but it is kind of scary because you're waiting for a pipe to appear at the bottom of the screen. And well, if you jump too early, you just hit the lava instead and die. And you have to go all the way back to the start of the level. I'm not really sure how much time that loses, but it is a lot of time. So you haven't hit any checkpoints. So let's see how Volza does it. Oh, wow. You could yeah, not even... Very... <laughs> you cannot even see the pipe there. Like, that had to be, like, completely optimal. That was actually a little scary. Brammy yeah, Bram 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 a bit more safe. <laughs> yeah, Brammy actually, like, fast. waited until the pipe was out. <laughs> okay. Bull's on a very good 8 castle right now. Yeah, he's doing good. And then that little Grammy switch right still... there, you want to hit it as far to the left as possible. Because right after that, during this cutscene, Mario's going to walk off to the left. And the further left you already are, uh, the less far he has to walk during the cutscene. So it's just a little optimization. And it just now, saves even time just for that you start the cutscene to where he walks earlier. Yeah, 
Exactly. And and now we're going to be entering the real final boss of this game. Um, so this is... It's not really a boss, more so... What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think it's just now back up. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, looks like Volza and Grammy both finished out some pretty solid runs, and Junior is finishing up here. I'm not quite sure what's happening. Oh, it looks like we're just continuing oh. as normal. So, that's okay. Well, it's been fun, and um, we didn't really get to s explain the escape sequence. Uh, yep, but... That's okay, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it's cool. You should check out the world record. That's mm -hmm. alright. Anyway, I guess we're moving on to New Super Mario Bros. 2. Yep. No worries. Well, it's been fun commentating with you, NM. It's been fun, yeah. Alright. Yo, Josh. Whoa. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so I was, was uh, playing a bit ago, but now I'm commentating. I'm Josh. Uh, we are looking at NSMB2 now instead of... Yeah, we had a Windows moment, but we're good now. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so... um. Fortunately, the wor first world of NSMB2 is really nothing special. Um, they're just running through a couple pretty generic World 1 levels with small Mario. Uh, Tanishi's kind of making his way through one of those right now, 1-3. Uh, where things start to get interesting, though, is 1-Tower, which is coming up. So 1-Tower yeah. is going to be our first vertical level. And hopefully we're going to see some really cool vertical movement here. One thing we can uh, kind of mention that we'll see in hopefully all the levels is that the runners are going to try to aim for 2,000 on the flagpole because you have to wait for uh, both the flag and Mario to finish moving to actually finish the level. And if you don't hit the 2,000, you lose anywhere from like one frame to a good amount of time, which will add up over time. Mm-hmm. Alright, I'm not sure if J-Dude is... I, I guess, just waiting for... Uh, Junior? Uh, I don't really know. We didn't get it uh, done or anything from Junior, so I'm assuming That's he's... That's probably why. His... Okay, no, he just, he just went now. Okay, so well... we should see that. <laughs> That's alright. <I> <laughs> I just realized I don't even have the right stream open. That would really help. Okay, that's alright. Oh, I think I had the... audio on the wrong person. Oops, there we go. Alright, so, well... Go ahead, Josh. So the cannons are pretty interesting, they're like actual levels where... Kind of like Super Mario Run, that, that mobile game that exists. Uh, you just kind of, like, continuously running right, instead of just entering the cannon and going to the next world. And the runners are gonna grab the red coins here, because when you grab them, they'll give a gold flower in your inventory. And that's pretty useful for, in a couple levels. I feel like JD like should have just not watched the cutscene, but it's okay. <laughs> Consistency is good, I guess. Um. So this level, they're just going to grab the uh, grab the star. There's not much here <laughs> in this particular level. This will just grow on me. Hold on a second. Yep. Yeah, and just getting that star, even though it takes a little bit of time, it increases your speed a ton, so it ends up being faster overall. Alright, we've had some hiccups here, but I think we're 
getting back into it, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, other than shoutouts to the speed gaming crew for just getting everything running again really quick, honestly. Mm -hmm. so this is just a pretty slow level. It's both water and auto scroller. But we see a can't you use the uh, gold flower there? Because there's actually a little flock that has a gold flower. And we're gonna grab another one for the very end of the run. And this also lets us enter like a pipe that's blocked by an enemy just a couple seconds earlier. Mm -hmm. You can see when you hit a wall, it kind of has a radius that it hits. Yeah, and they are gonna be grabbing another gold flower while they're here. Uh, and that'll be important later, but I think we'll wait till later to talk about it. It's more fun that way. If you look at JD's screen right now, actually, you're getting a chance to maybe see some of those earlier levels. Mm -hmm. so that's good. Like I said, we didn't really miss much there. NSMB2 is kind of regarded as just being very based off of the previous two entries, not adding a lot to the game in some sections. Like, it's got its good moments, but casually it is it is quite a bit similar to Mario Wii, so a lot of the levels are a little generic. Mm -hmm. It's a great speedrun, though. Especially, uh, Cannonless, or I guess Warpless, it's called in this game, has, like, really interesting movement. And I think it even has less auto scrollers than any percent does, if I yeah. remember that correctly. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be seeing a lot of auto scrollers here, but it's okay, because you get to mess around and have fun in them. So you can see, uh, that's a pipe that was guarded by the enemy. Those enemies, I don't actually know what they're called. But, that's the end of the first auto. So Tanoshi just did a wall, wall kick off of that pipe. Uh, that actually gets you to full speed faster than just running forward. It's a little optimization that's definitely used in like all of the games. All of the NSMB games. Alright, I think we're kind of back on track here, so this is good. Yeah. So, um... Ooh, let's see, the, good, uh, good movement from one tower in Jay's screen. Yeah, that was beautiful. Mushroom Ghost House has a couple different paths you can take, so Tanish is off opting for the, I guess, the safer path through this level. And Swim Ding is going to be going for the riskier one to save probably around a third of a second. So he pulled that off well. This is still very close between the two swimming teams. There's only there's still over half of it to go. Mm-hmm. There's a timer list, but I'm not sure if there's a good way to get that back. We'll just estimate based off of when the countdown happened. Yep. And um so now they're taking the, their next secret exit, so we didn't really talk about the worlds of this game yet. So the other games, they kind of just go worlds 1 through 8, and then world 9 is like the post-game world. NSMB2 is different though. NSMB2 only has six main worlds, and then it has uh, two special worlds, I guess, that you would see uh, before you beat the game called World Mushroom and World Flower, and then the post-game world is World Star. Uh, so the speedrun route, you go from World 1, and then you take a cannon to World Mushroom, which is where they're at now. And now they're about to take a cannon to World Flower, and then the cannon in World Flower takes them all the way to World 6 at the end of the game. So it's a little different than uh, the other games where they went from World 1 to World 5 to World 8. And I think uh, the Wii U games have a slightly different art as well. There's like World 7 in there, right? Yep. Wii U games go to World 7, so yeah. It's gonna be seeing some different things here at the end. But of course, uh, we got another auto scroller here. So, World Mushroom is kind of infinite, infamous with NSMB2 speedruns because it has a ton of auto scrollers, uh, especially when you get to like a 100% run or something and you actually do all the levels. And. The any percent run happens to include two of the longest ones, so uh, we get to do that like at the beginning. 
And in some sense, it's like a little bit frustrating to get runs started when you have those auto scrollers at the very beginning. But in another way, it like motivates you to continue more runs because you're already like further into the run by the time you get to like World Flower or something. Yeah, definitely. There's like nothing worse than having a sweet game where you can't get out of like the first three minutes or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, so for that sense, it's, it's good for the mentality. Um, okay, really important thing we didn't even mention yet. These guys got the raccoon suit, the tanuki suit, whatever you want to call it. They got their main power up at SMB2. Um, and this is going to be extremely important. So what this power up does is you can hold B to flutter in the air and stay in the air for longer, which of course is very useful. But even more important is you see that little meter to the bottom left of the screen? If you run for long enough and fill that up, you can gain enough speed that you actually are able to fly. And so what they're going to do right here is actually fly off screen and enter a pipe right as it loads. And that's going to actually let them get to the final area quicker. So you saw Tana should get it, and now Swimding's going to go for it. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to like get nice. slightly off-centered there, and suddenly you don't know where you are. And that can lead to some devastating consequences. Yep. So this and, this is a yeah. there's a gold block kind of following them. You can see that happens every is it two hundred thousand points? Two hundred thousand. Yes, it, it reappears every two thousand two hundred thousand points. Yeah. So we saw Tanchi hit it, and Imding's also gonna hit it. That's because there's like an animation of it appearing when you enter a new world. And then it loses like a second if you watch that, so that's why it's really important to hit that. Yup, and it takes like no time at all to just swing your tail at it as you pass it here. So with that being said, we can skip that little animation of the coin block appearing for World Flower. And then it will reappear in World 6, we are going to hit another benchmark on the, the points. Uh, enough that it's going to reappear, but it saves that one second or whatever. Did we talk about max coins? I don't think we did. <laughs> we didn't? I don't know if this is the best time to bring it up. That's so true. There's, like, there's an auto spoiler coming up, so... <laughs> yeah, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention. So, um... So, yeah, this level uh, got one of the most well-hidden secret exits, for sure. You just kind of need to activate this block as soon as possible. Um, but we're coming up on something really important in the next level. So the next level is kind of divided into two sections. Um, they're both auto-scrollers, but the first part, it's not actually a screen scroller. So what that means is you can actually skip over it. Very similar to how the runner skipped over 5-4 in Mario Wii. And the way they're going to do that, as I mentioned earlier, if you fill up the P-meter and start to fly, um, well, er, when you fill up the P-meter, you can start to fly, but if you don't actually hold the B-button and instead tap it, and then start swinging your tail along with pressing the jump button, for whatever reason, that lets you keep all your running speed, and it lets you make it much further while flying, and we call this dash flying. So by using dash flying, they can actually skip over that entire auto scroller section at the beginning. But now they're in a real auto scroller, so yeah. Now now we have some time to talk about uh, max coins. If you want to talk about that, Josh. Yeah. So this game has like a global coin counter, not just like file based for your actual cartridge or file download. And the max you can go is uh, nine million nine like not seven nines. And every time there's like a, it'll like count up every time you beat a level, but that usually isn't a problem. It'll happen as you move, unless there's like a save prompt, then it'll count up and then ask you to save. But if that coin counter is maxed out, like all the runners have it here, it won't, it won't count up because it's full. So it actually save like six or so seconds over the course of the run. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and it takes about. 15 hours to actually grind out that many coins so uh it, it's definitely for those who want to really put in the time to save those extra couple seconds mm -hmm. 
All right, and I guess they didn't really mention it, uh, F1, they already took a secret exit there, so they're on their way to getting the cannon for World Flower. Yeah, this is a very short world level-wise. Mm -hmm. That, that auto-score makes it a bit long, but... Exactly. You got a... Shoutouts to Miko with that cannon entry. <laughs> yes, shoutouts to Miko. Um, so the nice, the, the interesting thing about these cannons, if you've ever played Super Mario Run, it's basically the same thing. Uh, this Mario is running forward all of, automatically, so all you can do is jump. And uh, interestingly enough, you don't even need to dash fly in the cannons to keep your speed while flying because you're just going at a fixed speed forward. But we will be seeing a lot more dash flying now that we're in World 6. Especially in 6-1, which is coming up. Yeah, I like the thing, this is where the run actually starts. You can see a lot of cool movement here. It really is, yes. Uh, so 6-1, it's very similar to some of the World 8 levels we've already seen, with the meteors falling from the sky. And the meteors are random, but there is no pattern that can actually lose you time. So, at the end of this section, there's supposed to be uh, a part where they wait for these rocks to appear, but they can just dash fly all the way to the flagpole. And if you do it right, you'll never get hit. Mario number one. It's really nice, even though, like with that dash flying, it's still like pretty simple to hit the 2000 on the flagpole to not save that time, or to save that time. Yep, exactly. It is very nice. Alright, so, um, Six Stabs Ghost House. This is really interesting. So, a long time ago, we used to carry a Leaf Power Up in our reserve. And we would do a damage boost in this level and then equip that Leaf Power Up. But I mentioned earlier that we actually grabbed a Gold Flower for our reserve instead. So we're waiting to use that later in the run. So instead, instead of damage boosting, we're going to do something different. What they're going to do is they're going to gain a bunch of momentum going to the right and then turn to the left. And that's going to lure this Boo away from the switch that they need to hit. And that actually just ends up being faster than damage boosting anyway. So it's pretty cool that that exists. This level is one of the ones I feel like is like the hardest to optimize. Oh, because for sure. Those wall kicks at the end. Like, I saw that Tanishi me like, mess him up a little. If you don't get, like, all perfect wall kicks, you have to add some extra ones in. Yep, you gotta add two extras. Yeah, it's definitely very hard. So, 6-A is another level where they're gonna be picking up a star. Um, we didn't used to pick up the star in this level, but uh, people got good enough that they realized picking up the star is actually, like, a small fraction of a second faster if you do it really well. So they're probably going to be going for that because these guys are good. I didn't mention, so we have J-Dude is the world record holder here. Swimding is third place, I believe. And Tanishi, I'm not quite sure, but I know that they have a very good time. I can actually check that right now. Yeah, they're not far behind. I think they're all within 10 seconds of each other. Yes, I believe so. So yeah, just getting that star, saving that small fraction of a second. So as I mentioned, that coin block from earlier, it's going to come back in World 6. If it didn't already come back, it's going to come back now. And they're going to actually use that coin block to wall jump off of it at the start of this next tower level. And that's kind of going to set them into this whole chain of movements where you're really supposed to wait on these platforms in this tower, but instead of that, they're going to be doing a bunch of flying upwards, a bunch of wall jumping, and just really, really nice movement, and they're going to skip all of it. I'm guessing Swimming's uh, doing a bit of safe movement there with the uh, coin block guy. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. So yeah, now both runners are doing that. I think Swimming actually just pulled ahead. Oh, did Interesting. He? Whoa, what? Oh, oh I... Never seen that. <laughs> oh, what the? Okay. That Whatever was that was, it, it definitely worked. 
Okay, I just checked and you were right. They are all within 10 seconds of each other, and Tanishi has a 6th place. Swimming actually has a 4th place. But, yeah. So, yeah, we got 1st, 4th, and 6th here, so pretty solid. Uh, that boss right there has a chance of spitting out a fireball that can just screw you over. That's the really the only real RNG of this run. So, it didn't happen to either of them. We'll see if it happens to J-Dude later. In this level, uh, I don't know if it used to be like the optimal thing to do, but I remember we used to, at least like with the safest attitude, get P-Speed at the beginning. But it's actually possible to kind of squeeze in enough running on the ground to get like flying speed right here, so you don't have to stand on that platform and ride it all the way across. Oh man, Tanishi. That's okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can probably too. switch the audio. I think oh, so never mind. Did, yeah, he's, he didn't have audio. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, Slim Ding getting that auto scroller skip at the end. It's kind of it's kind of fitting. Like at the start of this run has a lot of auto scrollers, and then at the end there are also a lot of auto scrollers, but you can skip them, so it's really cool. All right, they're making their way through six five here. You're gonna notice Swim Ding spinning or swiping his tail as he jumps off of these yellow platforms. It's not just for swag; it actually saves time for some reason. I don't know why. Do you know why, Josh? I don't either. Okay, uh, I just switch a good game. <laughs> yeah, it's a really weird mechanic. So you're gonna be seeing that. So now that they're done with 6-5, uh, the last level is coming up here, Bowser's Castle. It's definitely the longest level, and we're finally gonna see that uh, gold flower used. Yep, but before we see that, we're gonna see something even cooler. Uh, so if you look at Swim Ding's screen right now, uh, you're about to see the only real glitch of this run. So, like I mentioned, in the olden days, we would carry a leaf in our reserve, and we would do some damage boosting, but we don't have that option anymore. So instead of damage boosting through this fire bar here, or the burner as we call it, we're gonna do something even cooler. Let's see if he gets it. Oh, he got it. He even got the cycle. Yeah, he even got the fastest cycle. That was really sick. And let's see if Tanishi, oh, Tanishi is opting for something called the gold block strat. So he's gonna use the gold block to get here through here instead of doing the clip that Swim Ding did, since he doesn't have the option to damage boost. So yeah, just a bunch of different methods for getting through this room that are all way faster than waiting for the fire to move out of the way. This room, uh, all the Koopalings uh, are in the back, and um, after like, a certain amount of time, you'll see the screen flash, and if you're not protected by a background, you will free, you will turn to stone and potentially die. Yep. And then and did just... it. Did I just mention he did a triple jump off the conveyor belt, and then he let go of the D-pad, and for whatever reason, that actually lets him keep extra speed. All right, it's yeah. gold flower time. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got very intense Bowser fight coming up. Yeah, I'm sure y'all are so eager to see why we've been saving this for the entire run up until this point, and I promise it'll make sense. So, yeah, that's Bowser. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Guess we better switch games. Yeah. So, um... Not only... Uh, or how do I say this? The, the, we used to have a way to just jump over Bowser, and it, it really is barely slower than just throwing the gold ball at him. But where this really saves time is during this cutscene right here. Um, normally, you would hit that switch, and it would play this cutscene of Bowser kind of like being suspended in the air before he falls into the pit and dies. But if you kill him first, you don't have to watch that. So where the gold flower really saves a bunch of time is on that cutscene. And by a bunch of time, I mean like six seconds, but that's a bunch of time for NSMB2. This game is really, really optimized. Um, I'm not sure why... Swim Ding is no longer on screen. I think you made a joke that we should switch the game, but it's not actually. Oh no, I was. Switch. <laughs> I, I probably should have clarified that was a joke. That is completely my bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Well, hey, the final boss is boring anyway. You're not missing anything. <laughs> I'm kidding. But the uh, final boss is an auto scroller. It's very, very, very fitting given uh, the nature of this run. Uh, but it is an interesting auto scroller. There are ways to advance it a little bit faster. Uh, it's a little bit hard to visualize here, but. We, we might see it here. Oh, J Dude just uh, moved. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm, I will take the blame for all of this. I will take you know the what? blame. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, this, essentially, this um, <laughs> you have to wait out, like, a certain amount of time on each section of the fight. There's three sections. And if if you're well-versed in the in the boss fight, you know exactly when you can go up to the next section, and, and it'll actually be loaded and advance the fight further. And so that's, that's kind of what's happening right now on Tanishi's screen. And at the end of the game, what he's going to do is actually go off and hit the final switch. And that's where the time's really going to end. Um, but the really cool thing is that I believe him and both, both him and Swimbing are going to try to go off screen and do it. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, Swimbing, it looks like, equipped the Tanuki suit. That's kind of a safety strat that you can do, and that makes it easier to fly up there, similarly to how they did it with the pipe in Mushroom B. Uh, but Tanishi's going to use that gold flower, which means if he falls, this is kind of scary. Alright, and they both got it. They're only like two seconds apart. This is great. Alright, well, that is the end of NSMB2. It's been fun. I am actually piecing out now from the commentary, so I appreciate you guys listening to me. It's been fun, Josh. Definitely. I, I'm also going to be out. We're going to see you in <laughs> NSM, NSLU, though. Yes. The last and game. I just want to point out, JDU got the burner clip, too, so that was pretty hype. Uh, yeah, I will be running in about 40 minutes from now on the new Super Luigi View. Let's hand it over to the uh, Mario U runners. and oh, Sorry, the Mario U commentators. Good luck. <laughs> Hello all. Hello. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, I got a mix. Okay. Hello everyone. I am uh, Alien, your NSMBU slash NSLU commentator. Hey, I'm Zumi. <laughs> I have nothing more to say. Nope. So we're watching some cutscenes here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, NSMBU, it's a... Uh, I don't have audio. Okay, there we go. Alright, uh... Yeah. I'm not... It's frozen for me. Yeah, for me too. Uh, it's hard to commentate. I cannot see anything on the screen currently. Um, but yeah, this, this is a... Uh, some pretty good gameplay. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. Okay. We're back. Uh, Jaded finishing uh, NSME 2. Psych. Alright, so yeah, 1-1 uh, one, one here. Uh, pretty straightforward. They're going to be getting uh, an acorn, which will they, they will be using uh, for a decent amount of the run, honestly. Pretty much all of it. This is like the only power-up you basically use in the speed run. So... Yeah, uh, we got Andrew Wayne's clock, you know, that's pretty cool, added to the setup. Yeah, yeah World 1 ain't too bad. Uh, so, Andrew Wayne is actually playing on the uh, Switch version of NSMBU. Which uh, he's going to be using Nabbit for in the uh, OG version for Wii U. You can't use Nabbit, so but it is actually faster to use Nabbit for the first three levels in uh, Deluxe. But Deluxe does lose like twenty to twenty-five seconds on loads, so uh, yeah. But that's why he's using Nabbit and uh, Maddo's using uh, Mario. The gameplay is just a game.
Hey, uh, that, uh, the flagpole going down. I love the sound effects. I think Jay might be finished by now. Yeah. Invalid re relay run. <laughs> Looks like we have some technical issues. You can hear Bowser um, having fun in the background. Can't really see what he's doing though. They're going to be moving to the uh, secret level uh, after one after taking the one two secret exit. I'm really trying my best just to go off the audio here. Oh, now I can't see anything or hear anything. Now we have a timer. <laughs> I hope they got the blooper skip. Oh. Yeah, some tech. Yeah. And Andrew got the blooper skip. Not that hard with uh, Nabbit. Oh no, Mo Mado taking damage. Ooh. And the gameplay is frozen in. But Elstix is now in the race, and I personally vouch for Elstix. I also personally vouch for Elstix, that he's, yeah. gonna, he's gonna get a 36, maybe. to cancer charity. So I hope Essex gets a world record. Alright Essex, you got a lot riding on your shoulders here. For real. The, the, the timer is the most important part of the speedrun for real. Yeah, who needs gameplay? Life splits carrying. Asics is just sitting on one one. Come on, man, you gotta move. This is a speed run. Also, Matto just sitting on the rainbow. Come on. Got places to be. Oh yes, load. Yeah, we got like uh like Miko loads over here for uh Andrew. In the stream so I can catch up. Good plan, Astix. Unsportsmanlike behavior.
this NS can be used in, in Ohio. <laughs> So they're probably roughly uh, somewhere in World 5 now, I would assume, like late 4, they're in early, no, yeah, they're probably late World 5. Pretty sure they're doing great work. They're probably in 5 Tower right now, doing some, doing some fun stuff. Watching some cutscenes. Um, let me see, let me think if there's anything I can explain about NSMBU while we're waiting here. Um, hmm. Probably could describe the boom boom skip. I love the boom boom skip. Uh, yeah, not really. Uh, there's you know there's a little bit of RNG in this run. Not not too bad. Uh, Seven Tower is very. Uh, there's a ton of RNG in the fight. Other than that, there's not uh, there's not really too much RNG in this run. There is a like world eight is. Has, is very very difficult, especially if you're a top runner. So hopefully we'll be able to see them in World Eight. It sounds like the first place didn't um, it isn't in the tower yet. crashed. Freaking hell. That's probably a good thing. Oh, the video is back. Okay, get us back. Alright, nice. Yeah, nice. Okay, we got Nato. About to do some cool stuff in uh, five power here. And Andrew is done with five power. Okay. So it looks like they played pretty well. Oh, now we get to see the tower skip from Edu. Okay, so yeah, uh, Asics is currently second place uh, on the OG leaderboards. I don't know what- I think Andrew Wayne has like a 38 on DX boards, and then Mado has a... I can't think of it on the top, top of my head, but uh, it's... it's all have, have pretty good times, so... Yeah... Home skip? Ooh... Asics having fun with the Koopas. Lose a little bit of time. Angel stream uh, going down a little bit. Yeah, world one and oh, Asics losing Acorn in five one. That is a uh, you don't see that too often, especially from Asics. Um, but yeah, world one and world five aren't the like hardest thing in the world. World seven and world eight is really where it picks up a lot. So uh, yeah, we got uh, Andrew Wayne. Can't really see what he's doing right now. It's a little dark in the ghost house. Yeah, so Asics will have to get a acorn from. I think the next one's in Five Tower. The time will die. Matto saving after f uh, Five Tower. That's a pretty decent idea. Timer is gone now, fat sadly. At least we get the gameplay though. So yeah, five tower, five ghost house has some pretty nice movement. So yeah, Matto playing really well. Oh, small block on the end, but still very good. Now we have Andrew Wayne in probably the best level in the run. We have the auto scroller of five secret. Most annoying place to die. It's happened before. Yeah, I've done it in races many times. Yeah, sometimes you do dumb things because you think you are safe in this auto scroll level. But then you do something dumb and die.
Castings is going to be losing a lot in 5-3, because 5-3 without uh, Acorn is uh, it's pretty annoying, especially dodging these brambles. Mado also going to the fun auto scroller. I kind of hope that someone dies today in the outer scroller. Where Essex is in the tower. Be grabbing Acorn in the next question block. I still do the skip for five tower, which is good. Okay, Andrew Wayne finishing uh, auto score. We can actually have some uh, good levels coming up in World Seven. Some interesting stuff. Seven one is a very uh, it's an interesting level. It's a it's a pretty decent it's a pretty big reset point for uh, new runners that are trying to learn new tech uh, and. You know, it's it's a pretty decent reset point for a lot of runners. It's it's a very difficult level when you're trying to do it fast. There are, there are like two big jumps that you need to do, or glides, to be more exact. We will see. But I'm very hyped about uh, what is soon coming, a uh, comic. See if anybody gets good Kamek RNG in Seven Tower. I'm saying no, but yeah, you never know. Uh, I doubt it. Okay, Matto done with the uh, auto score now. So yeah, Andrew Wayne pulling off some strats. Okay. Nice. Very Get clean. First skip, pretty nice. Pretty clean. This is the pipe kick. I can see. Ooh, I don't know if he did that on purpose or not. All right, the second part is not too bad, and then the third part is pretty difficult. But let's see, nice. All right, that was a pretty clean seven one from Andrew Wayne. Andrew is holding the lead for his team. Seven one for Matto. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Oh no! Okay, so Matto dying in seven one. There is a there is an acorn in uh, seven one, so it's not really horrible, but it still will lose a decent amount of time. Didn't expect that. Seven one's brutal. But, yeah, but as we said, this is a very decent reset point. For almost every runner, I would say. Uh, Acorn coming up. It's gonna be like messed up, so he's not gonna be able to do the. Oh, yeah, he's not gonna be able to get the Acorn until later because he was small. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, yeah, not gonna be able to do the first part. But luckily there's an acorn, so it's not too horrible. He lost about like 40 seconds. Andrew Wayne finishing 7-3. Still got his acorn. Going into a very big reset point. Probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, reset point for top runners. And, you know, basically a lot of runners, a uh, 7 tower. Yeah, let's, hope, let's hope for good comic RNG. The seven tower alone has like you have to have some like really good movement and you know it's it's easy to mess up, so and then you yeah. have that, and then on top of that you have RNG in the boss fight, so it's a very uh difficult level you could say. 
And, and it's like, so far. and it's like in the middle of the run, so it's annoying too. It's going pretty quick. Matto seven three. You know, it 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 can be difficult. It's oh no, Andrew run. got the damage in the tower Ooh. from the fibro, but luckily we have a, a lot of backups here. But still, it costs a, a lot of not not a lot of, but it costs time. Ooh. Okay, small slip up, but makes it to the fight with Acorn. Now we pray for good karmic RNG. Let's see. So yeah, basically Kamek can uh, spawn basically anywhere up there, so it's kind of... Yeah, it's very random. Uh, Andrew went getting a one cycle though, which is still pretty good. And then on the last... The last time Kamek spawns, they always spawn in the middle. Uh, I don't know if there's like... Yeah, if you... Yeah. Mostly in the middle every time. Now Mado in 7th tower. Let's see how this goes. Essex now going into World 7 2. Essex is chilling in, in chat during the run. Just, that's how, uh, you, that's how you know that the cutscenes are very long. Ooh. Mado messing up. Didn't lose Acorn though, which is good. Andrew entering Ghost House. Kind of hard to mess up a ton in Ghost House. It's basically just like optimizing movement. Mm -hmm. There, we, he will take the secret exit. Asics with a pretty nice 7 1 so far. See the RNG, perfect RNG. Oh, Ayo. Ah, uh, oh. yeah, that's Kamek for you. Oh no, losing Acorn to Kamek. That is unfortunate. Now he's got to wait again. That's a big time loss. Oh, and no. he died. oh my gosh. Oh, that is really very bad. unlucky. That's Kamek, man. Ah, Kamek. Come on, Kamek. Basic Kamek. Now he's going to start from the beginning. Oh, that's, that oh, is my huge gosh. time. He didn't got the checkpoint. Andrew finishing up seven ghost house. Now Andrew's team is. Uh, Got a pretty big lead now. NSLU is a very, uh, it's a it's a pretty consistent game. So if Andrew can just play consistent throughout, then uh, Team Swimming might be able to clutch it up. But we still got a game and a half left, so. Meadow gives with the death a chance to Astix and his team. Yeah, Team We Stand might be able to uh, come back if. Uh, Matto keeps messing up, but uh, let's we'll see. Asics getting some praise in the chat. He needs the motivation, all he can get. Matto back in the fight. Hopefully, get a good Kamek fight. Ooh, Andrew getting a cycle skip. Nice. Let's go. Right, come on, RNG. Metal, it's Kamek again. Oh my god, dude. Come on, Kamek. You playing safe? Asics flying through 7th tower right now. Oh, I'm missing the Kamek. But okay. Getting closer, the gap is getting very close now. Kamek is done. GG Mado. Essex going uh, to Kamek too. 
Entering camping oh. suit. Oh, he got the hit. The he goes for the backup acorn. He's going for the backup. I think that's a pretty decent idea. I don't actually know. I don't know. Like... Yeah, there is a, uh, a backup in here, but you have to... It does take a while to get it. Yeah, slow backup. Andrew, uh, fighting Ludwig. Andrew's- this is a really good run. Andrew's smoothing. Not really any huge mistakes so far. Ass is going into the fight now. Hopefully we get some- see some good RNG. Essex, it's Kaim, man. It's Kaimic. Okay, one cycle, not too bad. That was pretty good. Yeah, still not perfect, but better than Mado. Right, Andrew entering another auto scroller. Yay! Yay! We love auto scroller. <laughs> Now going in castle, Astix, uh having fun with the ghosts, the booze. Uh, Andrew trying not to get clobbered by a giant mechanical hand. I'm not going to lie, it'd be a little bit funny if he got knocked off. Just just a little bit. Yeah, I kind of hope it. Come on, Andrew, you got to make it interesting. You got to make you got to make it close. So come on, just uh, mess up real quick. But I think that Essex uh, got the backup uh, at Kamek Tower wasn't that dumb because he needs like for a few more levels because the next yeah. backup he could get is like the Auto Scroller level with the fist. Yeah, he was probably smart to grab it. Yeah. Matto, uh, not going for the cycle skip, I assume, because it's. Very difficult, and there's a decent chance of getting crushed, and that would be very bad because you lose your acorn and have to go back pretty far. Andrew playing with the death. Asks now entering Seven Castle, or about to. Mado is Ludwig. He got the early Ludwig hit. Ludwig probably the easiest boss in the game. After Morton. Uh, after Boom Boom. What do you mean? The Boom Boom fight is the hardest in the game, obviously. Andrew collecting the green coins for the flex. Asics with a pretty clean uh, seven castle. All right, Andrew, almost done with the auto scroller, the final auto scroller in the run, which is pretty cool. Matto entering the auto scroller.
Let's see Andrews uh, Bowser Jr. Pretty clean. Clean. Landing on the left side. Yeah. So he can trigger the cutscene earlier. Yeah, so you'll see uh, the blocks falling, and uh, if you stay on the left side, though, you'll just fall quicker, so... Pretty, uh, interesting. Now we have two people in auto scrollers. Mm. Yeah, that's like six... really isn't that far behind. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to say. He's really close. I feel like he can definitely pick up a lot of time over Mado in World 8 especially. Yes, I think Essex Elevator is more than enough to beat yeah, Mado. Yeah, Essex is insane at Elevator. But who knows, Elevator is a very tough level, so yeah. who knows who can mess it up. It could be also the death of uh, Andrew Wayne's run, or the death of Essex run, or anybody runs. World 8 is pretty brutal. I would say this is the hardest part. I don't think there's more than a minute time space between Mado and Astex. Swim, oh. in entering the no. world. Oh no, Mado got Mado, the damage. Mado dying for the swag, or not dying, losing Acorn to the swag. Um, that's gonna lose some time in the Bowser Jr. fight, so... That is unfortunate. There's a backup. backup. There's a backup. There's two oh, backups there? actually in this game, yeah. But he still lost through the damage and through collecting the item like a second. For some reason, I, I, don't, I didn't remember there being any backups like when the... A green coin backup and this one backup before the free files. Yeah, so my knowledge the, is the, I'm sorry. No, good. This game is pretty filled with backups. We can apparently to speedrun. Would recommend. Essex playing with the death. Just for the flex. He's having fun. Oh my god! Oh, it's, Bro, he it's really like got it's, like, it's, it's crop. So I thought he, I thought he was dead. He's dead. Oh my god! Okay, a little scary. I'm sorry, Josh. All right, Andrew going into eight two. So yeah, um, eight one. You can either do the secret exit and go to eight four, or go to, or do eight two and eight three. Eight, eight two and eight three is uh faster. I don't know how about much by how much, but uh, yeah, because eight four is an auto scroller. So, Matto going to the fight. Oh, Andrew goes for the skip. In lava right? Magma right? Yeah, huh? A2 is a... It's a pretty nice looking level to watch. Uh, and Andrew getting a pretty nice skip. Andrew is on a really good run. I don't know, is he on PB pace? I don't remember. Well, I guess I didn't see that, like, his early, like, early game, but... But it looks like a very good run. Like, he seems like he's on pretty good pace. 337. Pretty solid time. 57, sorry. He's not on PBB base? Okay. I got you. Bowser Jr.'s hopes and dreams getting destroyed by Mado. That is unfortunate. Andrew got the star clean. Shout out to Nick underscore. Love this part of the speedrun. Running with the star through the lava level.
All right, clean eight three from Andrew. Now he's going to be going into elevator. That is, uh, if he gets a good elevator, then uh, he's going to be insane. I think if he gets a good elevator, he his team won instant the race. I think someone will throwing it at NSLU. Yeah, like if he gets a if he gets like if he finishes off perfectly, I mean it's gonna be hard for like very hard. Uh, like it's 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 hard to lose three minutes in NSLU. So yeah. if he gets a really good last two levels, good ending, then Team Swimming may be taking the dub here. But not gonna say anything yet. You never know. Anything is possible. But. We got some lag, unfortunately. Oh, he missed the first uh, jump. It's fine, though. Still, uh, that was a good backup. Let's see if he gets the second half clean. Mm, look, looks good. They're looking really good, actually. Nice. Okay, that's really good. Come on, ending. Andrew don't dies. I think Ooh. the oh, race wow. is pretty clear. Okay, having a little bit of a mess up at the end there, but that was still a, like a, a really good elevator, so... Okay. He is in there. Oh yeah, he he waited there for the uh the, uh the he waited for fireworks to to go away. I was kind of confused for a second because I couldn't see his IGT, but yeah. didn't want to get fireworks. Okay, now he's going to the final level. Um, final level I wouldn't say is nearly as difficult as a uh, elevator. It's still difficult, especially the first room, but I would say Mado elevator got, is a little harder. Mado got the uh, um, the lava right skip too. That's a clean 8-2 from Mado. Asics cruising in 8-2. 8-1. Out of 56. So Andrew doesn't go for the uh, new strat on Baby uh, on Bowser Jr. Fine though. The strat saves a few seconds. But without the strat, he should be fine too. Especially with this uh, big uh, time gap. H moving. Alright, pretty clean. I don't know. I, don't, I can't see what the IGT is, but that was still pretty good. Is he's going for the lava right skip. Got it, clean. Took a slightly different route than the other runners. And nice. All three runners are getting very good uh eight two eight two skips. I don't what what's I don't, I don't know actually what the exact name for it is, but got a fifty seven lava ride S6, clean. Meta with a pretty clean eight three going into elevator. Monka W. And you're going to the final area. Bad in the elevator. Alright, here we go. I'm excited to see his elevator. Ooh, looks good. First okay. impression of the elevator looks better than the elevator of Andrew. A lot Richie better. Oh. oh! Oh, he got a damage. Okay. That's gets hit. Rip. That's rip. He did get half in. I mean, he's still going to be losing a decent amount, but I mean, still not too bad. But very good for Asics. Yeah, Asics can make some ground here if he gets a good elevator. I'm guessing he's going to be playing it safe. Safer than he normally does. Yeah, he definitely he got half in, so that's, that's pretty good. Andrew. Getting close to the finish line.
bit of lag. Andrew at the final boss. So Andrew may or may not be finishing right now. Um, got some more technical difficulties. Asics finished the uh, elevator. Asics is going to the elevator. I wanted to see his elevator. Yeah, sorry, Josh. Won't be able to see Asics' elevator, sadly. At least not most of it. I really want to see it. Oh. We got the timer again. I can tell it was good. GG's Aztecs. Oh. I Yo, trust Andrew. you. You used to Andrew. <laughs> Alright, that was a really good cool Andrew. Now we got Muff Team Swimble. Didn't sell you. Madu got damaged. Without Acorn. Oh, almost died there. Oh, got damaged again. Oh, it's getting close. I think Asix got a good elevator. <laughs> I can't tell. Asix may may go ahead of Madu yeah. here. Asix said he got a good one. The, the question is if you trust him. But, but it looks so. Like, he he's catching up Madu very close. As he's going for the new skip. Clean, almost got it. Completely, but saved a lot of time. Still, it's, it's okay. Essex. Oh my god! Ooh, close one, Essex. Maru at Boza, first fight. Hopes for an early Bowser jump. Yeah, was mid RNG. As Essex, very, very close at Meadow. He breathing in, in the neck of Meadow. Bro. Yeah, this is really, really close. And that's how you started. GG's um, to... Oh, I forgot who played. <laughs> the NSMBU game. Uh, Andrew. GG's to Andrew. Okay, NSLU. Finishing this run. Very clean run. We should be getting... Where's... Okay, Super is uh, waiting to commentate. Oh yeah, I'm still... I'm staying here for NSLU. Hello, Super. Hello there. Hey. Interesting relay so far. Excited to be uh, just excited to be ending it off here with obviously the best game in the series. Don't know what you're talking about. Mm, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're finishing off. I'm Zero a DLC. bias whatsoever. This is totally not a DLC. And this is like DLC, wish. but like a new game. Like I don't, I don't know what you, I don't know what you're on, man. I'm just saying. But it's okay. Um... Uh, well, I guess I can go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, my name's Super Sixty Four Guy. I uh, speedrun New Super Luigi at a top level on the cringe Switch version, so I kind of oh, stopped man. running. Oh. But uh, excited to see the end of NSMBU and see some great strats here in NSL. Yeah, Maddo and Asics are like so close. Oh, they are really close. close. Maddo falls out of the uh, final car. Asics is only like five, ten seconds behind now. A very, very interesting close race. Okay, I think, okay, Asics actually taking the lead now over Mado. Team We Stand is in second place now. Let's go. Never oh, mind. Never mind. Never mind. Thought, never mind. Sorry, I, I was watching Mado, but I thought he had one more hit. Yeah. Okay, but it's still uh, to us. about a 10 second difference only. Yeah, GG's to Mado. For sure. We could still get it. GG's to Essex, GG's to Mado. Very exciting run. Um, I'm going out, it was a very fun race, I'm, um, I hope we stand, still get second place, so have a good day. Thank you, Jimmy.
Awesome. All right, let's dive into this game. Now we now. can this really get into game. the phenomenal game that is NSLU. Um, so Muffin is actually pretty far in. He's in. He's actually almost already done. Going to be done with World One. We should note some some differences between New Super Luigi and New Super Mario Bros. U. So we kind of alluded that it's the DLC to New Super Mario Bros. U, which it unfortunately is. Um, the big difference between the, the the gimmick of this game, I should say, is that there's no checkpoints in every level. You, you have 100 seconds to complete every level, which means that the levels are a lot shorter in the long run, um, which leads for um, very quick gameplay uh, compared to some of the other new Super Mario Bros. games in the series. So you'll see that the levels are really short, um, and that's that's intentional game design. Um, the other thing you'll note is that everyone's going to be able to use Nabbit in this game as opposed to just the Switch Runners from NSMDU. Because uh, in this game, you can hold, I believe it's ZL on the gamepad, um, yep. and you can play as Nabbit um, even in the Wii U version of the game. So you're going to see that uh, Uvideo, who's just now starting in the top right, is going to be using Nabbit a lot. Um, it should. It's worth noting that Muffin is also running on the Switch version, um, and so Muffin is also able to use Nabbit, but we'll actually see that Uvideo and Mystery Wolf will use Nabbit a lot more in this run, due to the fact that switching to Nabbit and switching off back to Luigi on the Switch version takes about six seconds, because you have to go into a character menu. Um, versus holding holding a button going into a level loses literally no time. So you'll actually see that Nabbit is used quite a bit um, by Uvideo and Mystery Wolf. This is true. So yeah, uh, yeah, Mystery Wolf and uh, U Video very close. Uh, U Video having uh, he's got a very stretched screen right now. He's got a nice, uh, a nice, uh, yeah, good quality gameplay. Uh, five one muffins in. This is a you're gonna be using a lot. Of, you're, the vines. Uh, if you hold neutral when you're jumping off of them, you can get a lot of momentum. And Muffin's trying to conserve the momentum on this last part by jumping off of the Koopas. Very clean. Messed up, messed up a little bit in 5-1. He didn't get perfect um, neutral vines. If you get really good neutral vines, then you can get about a mid-81. Um, but still a very solid level, nevertheless. Uh, something worth noting is that Mr. Wolf's choosing to do Luigi uh, in 1-2 versus U-Video's choosing to go Nabbit. Uh, Nabbit saves about half a second in this level, due to, you're about to see right now, um, right there, Mystery Wolf had to glide. When you're gliding with star power, you actually don't get the increased run speed. And so because you play as Nabbit, and Nabbit can't collect power-ups, um, you can just breeze right through that section and just barely make that jump. And so since you've never slowed down, uh, you end up saving about half a second. But your movement has to be pretty on point, and sometimes getting the star grab can be tough and lose that time back. But very solid one twos from both you video and Mystery Wolf. And it looks like going into uh, five tower, will he be doing left or right side? I think he's doing. I don't know actually. I actually don't know what. I know that he was looking into doing left side. There's two ways to do this level really fast. This level being five tower. Uh, one is right side. It's uh, easier for uh, new runners to pick up on. Um, but you can actually do what's called left side, which saves about 0.8 seconds. We'll see. Oh, he's gonna go for left side. Wow. Hopefully he doesn't have a Caleb moment where he loses three minutes. Yeah, left side. <laughs> left side is a little more difficult. Oh no! Oh, that's gonna looks like it's gonna work. Oh never that mind. That looks like it's gonna work. Um I'm also just realizing I'm watching the Twitch stream and not the Yeah, you need to get in the thing. Yeah, I was wondering why you were talking so delayed. I need okay, to so get now Muffin is gonna be losing some time here. Yeah. He did so save it. That's gonna hurt. Honestly, I think it would have been now, the question okay, will be, know. does he know about the acorn backup at the end of the level? On the very left side, there's an invisible block with an acorn. Hopefully, he well, knows If he's that. listening to this, then I guess he knows now. If he's listening, he knows now. <laughs> um, if he's listening, Muffin, you're welcome. You um, should have just done right side. Yep, he's, he's going over the left side. Yeah, he's going to go over the left side and hopefully grab that. Yep, there we go. He he's was doing left side for the fans. He should have just done right side. Should have just done right side. Because that ended up losing... Quite a bit of time. I'm gonna Normally, you get fix. 85 doors. I'm gonna see if I can fix U Video's crop real quick. And U Video and Mr. Wolf are moving on to. Um, yeah, they're world, actually uh, really close. They're actually really close. They're moving on to World 5. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, Muffin lost about 35 seconds. Yeah. 
who did my math right on that? Also, fun fact, in every other NSMB game, an IGT is roughly about three quarters of a second. Um, but in this game, the IGTs are actually longer, and so each IGT, or in-game in -game second, uh, is actually worth one real-life real, real life second. So it's actually pretty easy to calculate time loss, because it's actual seconds. And normally you get, like, 85 doors, and Muffin got just under, a, like, a 47 door or something like that. So that's that should equate to about just over 35 seconds. Almost 40 seconds of time loss. Something that if Muffin keeps throwing like that, new video definitely has a chance to catch back up. Um, Mystery Wolf choosing not to go for the neutral vines, it seems like. Okay, you've been so that's going to lose that? Mystery Wolf a lot of time. Thank you for fixing that, Alien. Something else worth noting that I'm not sure if was mentioned in NSMBU is that the reason we like to play as Nabbit um, is not just because of the invincibility, but also because if you grab a flagpole backwards as Nabbit, for some reason, the the flagpole animation is a lot faster. Uh, similar to how it works in NSMBDS. It saves not as much as NSMBDS, but it definitely saves enough over the course of the run that it's definitely worth grabbing a flagpole backwards as Nabbit. Um, as Luigi, it saves a few frames. Um, but nothing like Nabbit. And it seems like uh, Muffin had a pretty clean uh, five ghost house. I went into five the ghost house. Is oh, sorry. Yay. My bad. The auto scroller, our favorite. Yippee! We've got we've got like the literal two best levels in the game. We've got five S coming up, and we got five three. <laughs> this is true. This is literally just literally just the epitome of the best levels in the run. But five five S is the worst. 5S is the worst, with 5-3 trailing not far behind. We love our run right and jump levels. Also, 7-2, uh, another amazing one. Another amazing one, we'll get there. 7-2 is great, man. Super actually, he, he loves 7-2. He doesn't I mess really it up at do. All. I'd never mess up 7-2. Yeah, he's never messed it up ever. I've never messed it up once in my I've never lost a run to 7-2. Nope. Don't check my Twitch clips channel. It, it's, it's, nope. That, that, that never happened. He messed it up. Alright, so, uh... Mystery yeah, Wolf's see. gonna be going in to, uh, tower. Let's see if Mystery Wolf opts for left or right side. And then Yuvideo will be going as well. Yuvideo's left side consistency's been pretty good today. We were doing some races earlier this morning, so hopefully Yuvideo gets a great left side. And Mystery Wolf's also going for left side. Nails it. it. That is a beautiful left side. Messed up the movement a little bit at the end, but hey, got it at least. Still clean. You video with a phenomenal left side as well. Beautiful. It's very, very close. Yeah, that's a real close race between the two of them. It's like four seconds difference. 35 from Muffin. Um, you'll notice that at the very end, the flagpole slowly comes on screen, and if you are too close to the right side of the screen, you'll actually bonk on the right side of the screen and have to delay to grab the flagpole. But if you time it just right, you can run right at the flagpole as the screen is panning to let the flagpole appear. And it'll actually let you get a 36 on the timer rather than a 35. And now we see if 7-1 is the bane of anyone's existence. That gasping muffin. Yeah, you'll... Uh... Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, similarities in this game compared to, like, uh... NSMBU, like the 5S. Basically the same exact thing, except for NSLU is a little shorter. Uh, 7 1. Fun level. Yeah, um, doing 7 1 with Nabbit is a uh, faster, but I'm pretty sure it's slower to do it if you're playing on Deluxe since you have to, tends to takes a while to change. Am I right? That is correct. Same thing with a uh, five ghost house. You're gonna see that Mr. Wolf and Uvidi are gonna both go in as Nabbit here, because um, it's just as fast to do it with Nabbit as Luigi. And if it's just as fast to do it as Nabbit with Luigi, then uh, blah, just as fast to do it with Nabbit, then do it with Luigi. Then you end up saving time with Nabbit because of that faster flagpole animation. Uh, but again, it's it's just it loses way too much to switch to Nabbit, and so it's you're not gonna see any more Nabbit from a uh, muffin. And this is the one part that the route actually de- one, one of the two parts where the route deviates from New Super Mario Bros. U. New Super Mario Bros. U, you take 7-3, but in this game, 
it's way faster to do 7-2. Um, by quite a good margin as well, actually. I don't think I've actually ever seen 7-3 three, three in this game. Ever seen new videos legendary and a uh, new Super Luigi 100% speedruns? Well, you know, sometimes you just don't see, like, I I, I don't think... It's not that I, rem I don't remember it, I don't think. That's fair. It's the rainbow level with the platforms at the very beginning. Oh, wait, okay, yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. They're both this going into the auto scrollers. Let's go. And they should both be going into Snabbit because, again, the, the flagpole uh, time save. Nabbit is a little scary at times. I'll actually be seeing but... Nabbit for quite a while from Mystery Wolf and you video because we're going to be seeing Nabbit in 7 1 and 7 2. Unless they don't do it with 7 1 because sometimes it's scary. That's true. 7 1, it's pretty difficult. The movement's pretty It doesn't pretty save tight. that much. Um, Muffin going into Seven Tower, which has some pretty interesting Ooh, movement. And that's losing unfortunate. I don't. That does lose a lot. I'm pretty that's sure. That's gonna lose quite a bit. Um, simply because that Kamek boss fight, it's gonna be annoying to try and hit Kamek. He's probably gonna, is he gonna take that Ice Flower for safety? He is. Give him a little bit of life insurance. Oh, hey, <laughs> two two close calls Ooh, there. Get a little scary. <laughs> a little little scary. Um. Highly unfortunate there. Thankfully, there's quite a good good number of backups, and so if Muffin knows, he will be grabbing the backup in uh, Ghost House, which is the next level after this. It's just unfortunate because this boss fight's gonna lose so much. For 35 from Matt up. Dude, everyone got 35s. We have no 36 games. Every runner, no 36. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Highly unfortunate. Maybe next time. Let's see how Miss uh, Muffin does this fight here. Ooh. Yeah, and <laughs> really unlucky. Gimmick being mean. Gimmick RNG is just exactly the same as NSMBU in that it is RNG and it is cringe. And let's this see is if actually going to be really close from all of them because now I'm going to gain some one. time. Ooh, Ooh Kamek is just doing some top four here with Luigi. Kamek is really Now close. it's going to break the blocks. Ooh, Ooh and that's going to lose even more time. Yeah, doing this fight without Acorn is really annoying. Seeing so Mystery Wolf going safe in 7 1 here with Luigi. U Video is going to go risky with Navit. Oh my god. I feel so bad for Muffin. And Muffin's. Oh. <laughs> Part of it's Muffin's okay, there we fault. Go. A good bit of it's Kamek really just being annoying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Alright, hopefully. See the last hit. Oh. He's getting oh, stuck. That, should, that should be fine. Oh, except for you. <sighs> <laughs> we got the 100 second time limit creeping up here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. Here we go. We're moving on now. Wait, did Yuvin die? Yuvin must have died. I missed that. Clearly, oh, we were, we're, we're too busy watching the muffin. Missed... It's hard to watch three screens, watch. man. It really is. Okay, so that's unfortunate. I don't. That is really unfortunate for you, video, because that's going to put Muffin quite in. Or, excuse me, that's going to put Mystery Wolf very far in the lead. So yeah, Uvidu's gonna have to bank on Mystery Wolf, like, lose an acorn in the fight, like Muffin did. You otherwise, or... otherwise it's gonna be pretty, if Mystery Wolf keeps up this gameplay, which Mis they've been playing pretty well, it might be tough for Uvidu to come back from that. Nabbit? I think, how much does Nabbit save in... It's only like an IGT, right? In 7-1? Nabbit isn't... Yeah. Well, you can technically get 76 with Luigi, but it's pretty tight. The main time save is the flagpole animation. U video, so U video is actually gonna play play it smart. He's actually not gonna play as an abbot in seven two, because there's a red coin ring in this level. And if you get all the red coins, Ooh. you get um, an acorn. So U video is gonna grab that. Hey, Muffin getting the Muffin nice grab the star and the acorn, so that's good. Oh, missing the door a little bit. But we got acorn back, so hopefully no more shenanigans from Muffin for the end of the run. Hopefully. Yeah, and that acorn backup that you video did, it only loses about two, two, two and a half seconds. So that's a pretty good, good backup for you video. But it's still gonna be an uphill battle for him. Mystery Wolf not losing acorn, so that's good. We're about to see how. How Mystery Wolf's fight is, hopefully. Didn't have a great first room, it looks like, from the IGT. I missed what the first room looked like, but it wasn't optimal uh, based on the IGTs. You video, on the other hand, having a pretty good first room. Alright, let's see. Come on, RNG. 
Less RNG. Let's see what kind of cycle we're getting here. Oh, that could be for, for that could have been a zero cycle if you were. I can see why they played safe. Makes sense why for them playing safe. Looks like that's a two cycle Kamek there. Not, not horrible. Not horrible. Definitely would take it in a race. U video could make up some of that time with better RNG potentially. I'm getting a decent uh, set. Uh, oh, Muffin with a 75 door seven castle. We take those. That's a very good seven castle for Muffin. <laughs> But unfortunately, we're going to be focusing on U-Video as we see if uh, U-Video gets any better RNG. Uh, that's that. If you didn't... Oh, he still made that. I'm actually shocked he still made that. He's cruising. He really... Yeah, if that's he a... one. That's really good. Unfortunate where Kamek spawned for that first, so it ended up being a 151. Unfortunate RNG for that first hit, but very clean that he still got the zero cycle for sure. There's definitely still places that Mystery Wolf can mess up, so... u is definitely not out of the count, but... Mystery Wolf op also opting not to get the star. We actually just found out pretty recently um, that there's a star in this level. And it does save some time. Um, and so... Uh, you saw Muffin get it, and it didn't really end up saving any him, him any time. It was more so an insurance policy to make sure he gets that acorn. Yuvity, on the other hand, is going to grab the star, hopefully. And show off the time save. Yeah. Nice yes, star grab. And that should end up being an 89. I think. I think it was an optimal enough star grab. Yeah, that's a clean 89. Awesome. Yuvity is really not that far behind, even with that death. Just goes to show that the levels are that short that you really not you really don't lose that much to death. He isn't too bad. I mean, like obviously it would kill like a record pace run, but in terms of this race, it's still even just not as far behind as I had imagined. So unlike NSMBU, uh, the airship here is uh, not an auto scroller, so we're gonna be seeing some pretty slick movement from Muffin. Well, technically, it is an auto scroller, but as we can see here, it's a skippable auto scroller. Kind of like the clouds that you saw in 7-1 and in SMBU. Second room, unfortunately, is an auto-scroller. Yeah, but it's very small, so... Yeah, not too long. Not a lot of downtime. The video having a clean castle so far. Oh my god. Really, really low. That's pretty low. Yeah, I was gonna say, that looked pretty low. Yeah, that was super low. low. Good backup, though. Very good backup. Losing... Losing, like, four seconds, but making it harder for him to get catch back up to Mystery Wolf. Nice first hit for... Looking like a clean fight from Muffin. A great fight nice. from Muffin. Oh, but he didn't go on the left well, side. Not on the left side, unfortunately. But... And a little bit... A little bit unoptimal on the third hit, but... I mean, for a race, you take that fight. Give it about to finish pouncing on Ludwig. Should have one more hit. Muffin, wait, Muffin didn't know left side was faster until this relay. <laughs> what do you mean left side? Like in Five Tower. Why, why else would Muffin go for it then? Did Muffin think it was easier or something? Well, I don't know, he just said he didn't know it was faster. Why would you go for it? I, I, I don't know. Commentator confused by the logic behind that one, but hey, you know, <laughs> we learn something new every day, I guess. Oh, he said. Oh, he said he was talking about the Bowser Jr. fight. Yeah, Muffin, if you on the very left, oh, it yeah. saves time because it falls. All right, let's see if Mystery Wolf messes up this area, because then new video might have a chance. But it looks like very, very clean. It's actually once you realize how that. Uh, Auto scroller segment works. It looks like it's very hard, but you pretty much just hold jump at two very specific points and you get it every time. Yeah. So very hard, very, very hard to mess it up in a run. Is possible, but odds are quite low. Alright, so uh in 8-1, they're actually gonna be getting the secret exit, unlike uh NSMBU, because 8-4 in this game is not an auto scroller, so. They can yeah, just uh, go through it pretty quickly. Fast in this game. 
Yeah, it's and like the mo- it's honestly, in my opinion, the coolest level that any percent have done well. The yeah, movement is really sick in A4. Hopefully, at least one of them can get like a really good one. Hopefully, all of them. It is quite. It is pretty easy though to, to mess up some things. It's pretty easy to mess up eight one as well. To be fair, um, at least for Muffin, just because you don't have the insurance of Nabbit. Yeah. Um, Mystery Wolf and Uvidy will have the insurance of Nabbit, and unfortunate RNG uh, from Muffin there. Unfortunately, the meteors, in order to get to that secret exit, you need the meteors to break the blocks to get to the secret exit, and they are RNG, and the fastest RNG is technically middle, um, if you know how to play optimally. Um, with right side being not that much slower at all. You would with a nice pretty much, pretty much getting middle or right side is very good in a run, but if you get left side, then you lose about a second. Muffin still has a pretty pretty nice lead, but, you know, it's... It's going definitely down. Definitely not over, but it's definitely yeah. pretty it's safe for levels like Yeah, we'll have to see how this 8-4 goes. 8-4 is really easy to mess up if you're nervous. Let's check out this 8-4. Clean start so far. Let's see if he gets this wall kick here. Nice! Oh, that un that's an unfortunate bonk! Ooh, Barely okay. dodges that fireball. That was a little tough. That Let's actually was almost a perfect 8-4, minus that bonk. If he didn't get that bonk, that would've been great. Opting not for the pipe kick there as well. Pipe yeah, kick that does is a save pretty short five. level. 14, 14 IGT there. Yeah, and generally you get pretty high 87s if you play optimally, so... Now he's going to the elevator, which looks a lot... different than NSMBU. Yeah, unlike NSMBU, the elevator in this game is significantly easier. So, and, and it's also horizontal. Yes, that's true. Good point. Oh, uh, interesting start there. Nice backup, though. All right, you know, he's just showing off for the fans. It's just, just vibing, you know? Let's see what uh, RNG Mr. Wolf gets real quick here. Nice. Right side. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Definitely take that. All right. Come on, Muffin. Okay. Play to safe, which is, I can see why. Yeah, still pretty good. Alright, now Muffin going into the last level. Hopefully he can clutch up for his team. Get a pretty good ending. Alright, you video RNG, middle. Not bad. Although not opting to go for the wall kick there. Ideally, with middle RNG, you want to uh, jump up right when the, the block breaks, which is what you video did, but then you also want to wall kick off the left wall, because that'll get you to accelerate much faster than just jumping. Oh, Mr. Wolf messing up a little bit. Eh. A little bit of tomfoolery. A little bit of tomfoolery, indeed. Ooh. Ooh a lot of tomfoolery. Oh, and he's gonna, they're going to wait it out. That's very smart, actually. I don't blame them. Yeah, it's better to wait here, I guess. That, that's oh, what I'd probably oh. do. That's tough. You video nails the save four. Ooh. Ooh. Muffin not getting dying. the the re grab on Bowser Jr. Clean eight four from you video. That's why eight four is the best level in the run, in my opinion. I mean that's just clean. Muffin losing quite a bit of time in first room because he didn't get any pushes from Bowser Jr. Unfortunately. Unless he dies here, he should be able to clutch up first yeah. place. A death, see, the unfortunate thing is a death in this fight is gonna set him back way further than you would think, because there's no checkpoints in this game, if you recall. Yeah, it's kind of so like, a, uh... A yeah. death in this, in the fight, is gonna mean he's gotta play the entire level again from the beginning. Oh, no pressure. He's got this. And it looks like it's pretty hard to die. actually pulled back ahead. Did... Mr. Oh, didn't did die, I don't think. Oh, I'm stupid. Wrong rooms. I'm dumb. <laughs> Ignore me. I He's still about don't know what I'm doing. 15, 20, give or take. Yeah, I'd say that sounds about right. So, getting knocked out of the clown car by Mystery Wolf will give it to you, video. Let's and now we're moving on. To the, and it shouldn't be worth noting that the boss fight's exactly the same as uh, NSMBU. Yeah. So. See how it goes? 
Buffett's probably so nervous right now. He's got the whole team on his shoulders. He needs to clutch. <laughs> Muffin's got a clutch. I mean, as long again, as long as Muffin doesn't die. I mean, Muffin can get hit out of the clown car multiple times. Yeah, he's just also curious to see as we're watching this first room if now nah, no one's gonna go for the 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 swag Astic strat. It should be worth noting that in NSMBU, if you remember, Astix was able to stay clinged on Bowser Jr. to get infinite pushing. Um, you actually can also do that in this game. U video, I think, is looking to opt to go for it. A little too high, though. So, he backs out, which is smart. And now it's going to get... Ooh, that's going to be on 80 high. 87, that's too bad. Rough. But if you can actually do the same thing that you can do Ooh. in NSMBU that Astix found. Um, and if you nail it, it gets you a high 89 door. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Muffin. Huff from Muffin's Muffin. gonna Muffin. get knocked out. Oh, oh my god! I can't believe Muffin didn't get knocked out. Oh of the my car. god, this is so sketchy. That's crazy. Okay, come on, Muffin, one more hit. Okay. Don't one get knocked hit. out. Nice. Muffin! No! Oh, okay, he's still good. Yeah, he's, he's still, still, still good. Definitely he's still fine. He's not die. All we gotta do is not die. Well, that's one insurance card played. He's really making it. He's really making it uh, nerve-wracking for the end for us, isn't he? <laughs> he's doing it for the fans. Really freaking us out here. Obviously intentional. Yeah, he's doing this for the fans. Okay, for our entertainment. This is gonna be a really close ending for all three teams. Yeah. Wait. Heck, it's Mr. Wolf's in the fight now. And... GG to Team Swimding. Team Swimding or said dub. Big W. Put your Swimdings in chat, ladies and gentlemen. And it looks and like... now we have to see the fight between Mystery Wolf and you video. If Mystery Wolf way. gets a fight, then Mystery Wolf's gonna clutch second place for their team. But... Getting knocked out of the Quan car once for Mystery Wolf and a perfect fight from U-Video is going to mean that U-Video is going to be able to bring it back, I think. Yeah, this will be interesting. It won. Oh. Oh, oh, Mystery Wolf. Uh, this is not good. Is oh my god. Oh my Dude, goodness. Oh my god. What I've never seen these, fights this close. What as is it with these Bowser fights? Uh, oh, I don't know. Oh. Uh, okay. Still losing time because of where Bowser ended up coming oh out. Oh my god, but that's okay. Fine. This is very nerve wracking. Oh, uh, oh my it god. Shouldn't, it shouldn't, uh, he sh they should be fine. Yeah, they're fine. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Well, they I think, are fine. I think Yuvi just messed up. Oh, wait, no, he's good. The wind and... came. And that's GG nice. to Mystery Wolf and Team Swimding. But Team Japanese. <laughs> Team Swimming again, there you go. And there it is for and you, video. Yeah, that, that was, was so very close. Oh cool. my god, that was a 10 that's second difference. Been, yeah, that's like about a 10 second difference. That's crazy. Wow. What an incredible insane. end to the relay. That was hype. That's pretty crazy. Uh, oh, let's go the the name. <laughs> we have Super64 guy added to the comm list <laughs> as they finish. Let's, let's go, dude. Appreciate, you know, my work being recognized, you know. Glad I'm here. Yeah, we're going to shout him out at the end. <laughs> well, speaking of shout outs, it might be time to to give some of those out. You know what, since yeah. we've, we've reached the end of our time. So shout outs to all all the runners, first of all, for competing in this competition and giving us some incredible con content uh, to react to and watch. A uh, really close relay race, and it was a lot of fun to watch right up to the end. And shout out to the comms, you know, couldn't do it without them. True. Especially and also video Speed Gaming. Game. Yes. And also Speed Gaming. Thanks for the host. We appreciate it. Uh, and I think the biggest shout out of all, thank you uh, to Josh. Josh TGR for putting on uh, this for everyone. Yeah, let's uh, go, Josh. Josh was the, the main organizer of this relay. And, you know, it takes a lot to find, you know, 15 qualified runners and lots of commentators and then try and find a time that they're all lined up with that's not easy um so huge shout outs to josh for making all of this happen we really do couldn't couldn't done it without him and we really Thank appreciate you so much, joshua. um but yeah uh i 
guess that's uh about it. I mean, anything else? Any yeah. other shoutouts we got? I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. I think we, I think we hit everyone. And I'm, I'm done. Thanks for commentating with me, Alien. It was a lot of fun. It was a very insane time. It was, it was really, very fun. really insane. You know, great, great duo of comps at the end. I guess we'll end it on some Mario 64 DS. Yeah, this is some great gameplay. I'm getting some flashbacks from earlier <laughs> races in the uh, Mario Wii tournament. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess that's about all. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Shout out to everyone, all the runners, commentators, and Speed Gaming, and Josh. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you. Uh, See you next year. In 20 years. Next... Joe Biden. <laughs>